Welcome back to Badger Blitz TV, your Rivals.com destination for all things Wisconsin athletics. Once again, I'm Matt Perkins, joined, as always, by my good friend, Rivals.com national analyst, Clint Cosgrove, reporting live from live. Atlanta. Clint, how are, th- how are things in the ATL? Uh, they're good. I got in about uh, 3 a.m. last night. We're out at the field right now. We've got the combine going on. We've got uh, different waves of kids coming in, all different positions. Uh, really from all over. I mean, Atlanta, surrounding areas, Louisiana, Florida. Um, and then uh, we've got the, the big invite camp tomorrow as well. So uh, we're out here at Lakewood High School Stadium. Uh, it's actually a pretty, pretty beautiful stadium for those that are watching. It's, oh, yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, got some trees in the background. We got, we got guys warming up right over here. So mm-hmm. we got a little bit of everything. There's, there's hundreds of upon hundreds of guys who, who will come out to this event so, and it's all free. Yeah. And so uh, a lot of scouts, I assume there as well from different colleges, yep. things like that. No, so, not really. Actually, uh, they're, they're, they're limited, maybe, maybe lower levels, but, um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of coaches who will volunteer okay. at this and stuff like that. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. So walk us through this event, right? You said it's two days. First day is open to anyone. Second day is invite only. If I am someone who, works for a college or is just here as a talent evaluator on on some sort of level, whether I work for rivals or whatever, what am I looking for on day one in the open camp versus day two? And then what am I looking at on, in terms of what can I see here? Like without pads on or anything like that, that I can't see on film. Yeah, for sure. So the day two guys, the, the majority of them have already been invited. We'll take a certain amount of guys who really stand out in this combine portion. A lot of that's going to be passing the eyeball test. If they don't pass the eyeball test, it's going to be based off their times, their 40, their grad year, their their recruitment, what's going on with that. So um, when out here, uh, really, it's, a, it's an athletic and physical evaluation. You're looking at the way kids bend. Uh, the way they transition their weight, are they explosive? Uh, how are they doing the free cone drill? You know, are they, they a raw talent? Do they have upside? You know, how old are they? Uh, everybody's, you know, recruitment's at a little different point. And, uh, you're basically trying to eyeball and figure out who's going to be the cream of the crop here. Get them back tomorrow to compete with the guys that have been invited already. Um, as you see, they were just grabbing one. They'll, uh, they'll do an invite for a guy right there. And, uh, you can you can see it live and in person. Oh, so I love the, it! The, I love it! Congratulations yeah. to him! Congratulations! Yeah, to him. congratulations! Right congratulations! <laughs> so, uh, they'll, yeah, so they'll interview him right now, and then uh, you know, take a picture of his car, get all his uh, staff down, and then he'll be invited back to come back tomorrow, compete with uh, you know, mostly high end offered kids. You know, uh, I'm looking at the the elite list. There's tons of rivals, 250 kids who are signed up to be here tomorrow. Uh, you know, anybody from the number two player in the nation, David Sanders, down to, uh, you know, guys who, who who don't have offers but are up-and-coming guys as well uh, on the roster for tomorrow. So, and, and it's building by the minute, as you can see. So what, what position do you think you can tell the most about, uh, about from a combine level event versus the least amount? Um, you know, that, 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 that's hard because it is an athletic evaluation. Um, geez, I don't know. I mean, like, like personally, what I, I would think that it would be, it would be easier to evaluate corners and wide receivers the most at something like this. Cause I think those are typically, those tend to be the most pure athleticism on athleticism things that you see. Right. I mean, I also think edge, ed, edge rushers as well, because you can see the speed and the strength, things like that. But I think something like a quarterback, offensive line especially interior offensive line that might be a lot in linebacker especially would be i would imagine to be much more difficult to evaluate in a setting like this yeah so for stuff like that especially with those bigger guys like if we see a kid who's six six you know 300 pounds and they're they're running a five one electronic 40 because we use all the same timing mechanisms as the as the the uh, nfl combine Yep. Um, so, you know, kids who are used to running four threes might run a four, six here, but that's still pretty, you know, it's pretty darn good and that's rolling. So with the big kids, it's, you know, in a combine setting, it, it can be hard, but if they're big and long and they can move, well, uh, we, we want to bring it. I mean, that's why we do it. We want to bring them back. We want to see, can they, can they go up against the best during one-on-ones and stuff like that? Corners and stuff, you, you have a pretty good idea because you can look at the length and then, you know, find out what grad year they are. Look at the times, you know, if you don't hit certain measurables, you're not going to be a highly rated kid. Um, you know, 
receivers, it can be hard because a lot of those guys are tall and long and have good straight line speed. And then you bring them back the next day and they, uh, they're tripping over their, their feet coming out of breaks and they can't catch any ball that comes their way. Sometimes those guys end up being outside linebackers. So, um, it, it's really on an individual basis. I mean, like I'm watching these guys warm up over here and, uh, flexibility and stuff is, is if there's a big long kid who's flexible and can bend during warmups. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to go and watch him, see what he does in his 40, go and get his card and stuff like that. So there, there's no one way to do it. There's a lot of eyes on kids here as well. So, uh, kind of a group effort and, and uh, we try to figure it out to the best of our ability. Yeah, for sure. What's your favorite one-on-one drill to watch? Or drill to watch Definitely, tomorrow. Well, you know, all the one-on-ones tomorrow are 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 fired. Um, like the offensive and defense alignment are good because I mean it's like straight up dudes. Now you don't have the pads on, which sucks. Uh, but these guys, you know, if you go to a practice and watch one-on-ones versus you know people go and watch one-on-ones of these camps and be like, no pads on, doesn't matter. It's not too different if you go to a practice and watch one-on-ones when guys are just in uppers and stuff like that. They're still doing the same thing, push and pull and long arm. And, you know, the only thing that you're not really supposed to do in these in that type of setting is the bull rush, uh, you know, and obviously bringing guys down to the ground. But uh, you can tell a lot from the one-on-ones in these events. Um, and then the receivers and defensive backs are fun because the level of athleticism, especially in the South, is pretty insane. And uh, they get a little chippy. They're, they're not afraid to talk, so. Uh, the whole day tomorrow is it, it's pretty incredible. You know, well, that, the, that's what I want to ask you about because I think one of the things that you can see no matter what here is the competitiveness, right? And the drive. Yeah. And you see a kid who has yep. a bad rep. How do they respond from that, right? Do they yeah. do they overexert themselves and get themselves too psyched up that their next five reps get you know muddled up, or do they come back, regroup, and have a great rep the next time? And so I, I think that could also be. I imagine at least I'm projecting here that that would be something you would look at as well. Oh, no question. Um, and, and you try to put everything in perspective. You know, some of these guys haven't been coached up before. Like I was out at the LA one a few weeks ago. And it was this kid. I was like, he'd be really good. You know, he gets in one-on-ones. He's just trying to beat people's speed. And he's, he used to do that in, in high school. It obviously didn't work here because he got six, six guys and just putting a hand on them and, and keeping them at bay. I just go up to him. I was like, next time I want you to go hard upfield, get them back. I was like, and then just cross the face. Guarantee he went. And then, he first rep he goes i'm like he didn't do it and then the very next rep cross his face you know sacks the quarterback and or the, the garbage can or whatever it was that day but um so yeah i mean uh it, it's a, the fun part about it can be as well as you see a, a raw talent and then you see okay i'm gonna tell him what to do how to be successful does he do it a and then if he does does he look good doing it and does it work b so um, yeah, these are fun. I, I, you know, I have a camp background. I love going to camps and, uh, you know, tomorrow's especially with the, with the amount of talent that will be there will be pretty cool. Well, I was going to say like, you get to do a little bit of your, uh, a scratch a little bit of the coaching itch while you're there. It is no, a little bit of the coaching uh, itch. Yeah. I have to catch myself cause we have coaches here and I'm like, I want to run out there and, you know, and, and get right in the middle of it. So, um, but yeah, no, I, I've got a million other things to do. So, but it's fun to, to give a little pointer every now and then and then see, see how it works. That's so. fantastic. Well, let's switch to the Badgers here for a couple minutes before I let you go back and get to your duties here in, uh, in Atlanta. Um, two linebacker commits this week, Thomas Heiberger out of South yeah. Dakota and in state line Gauthier from Bayport. Uh, two two big gets, two kids ranked five sevens. Who I think I especially think Heiberger is a kid who could push for be a rival two fifty kid. He's just probably pretty underexposed coming out of South yeah. Dakota. But you look at him physically, and he's got all the tools. So I know the staff is high on these guys. How do you feel about both of these fits in Tress's three three five? And then following that, how do you feel the Badgers should look to sort of round out this linebacker class in twenty twenty four? Yeah, I don't know how many linebackers they're taking, but um, if you're looking for an inside guy and an outside guy, they just got two really good ones. Um, the the kid from South Dakota, you know, you love his ability to come off the edge, natural dip and rip and get up with the quarterback and play in space. He's long. He's athletic. I think he ran like 11-1 in the 100 early on in the year in the Dakotas where you know that it's cold as crap and he's a linebacker. So that's pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he's a freak athlete. He's a four, I think he's a 40-inch uh, vertical jump. Um, and, uh, you know, you got to love a, a raw kid from South Dakota that comes in with that type of athleticism, mm-hmm. length and upside. And, 
um, you know, they're going to be able to do a lot with him. Uh, I think he can be a slot defender. He can play on the edge. He can rush the quarterback and do a little bit of everything. Now, when you look at landing Goff here, uh, you know, he's that, he's that throwback. Um, I think I told John when they were doing his commitment story, I was like, he is a throwback player with modern day athleticism and a fit for the modern day game. Um, he's a physical kid who's going to put his head through your chest. He comes with bad intentions. He's mean. He's, you know, he's a, he's a green Bay kid. He loves his Packers. He loves his Badgers and he loves to hit. So, um, they're going to play him in the middle, uh, you know, three, three, five wise. When you look at the schematic importance of that is, um, you know, uh, you're going to have a lot of, you know, second secondary, you know, uh, safeties rolling down to kind of fit in where he goes, because a lot of the time that inside linebacker is coming as a fourth rusher. And that's something he's going to be really good at. Um, he'll have twists and all kinds of games and stunts going on in front of him. And uh, so he's going to have a chance to rush the passer. He's going to look like the water boy running through the quarterback. Um, but then, you know, he can play sideline to sideline as well. Uh, you know, there's, there's just a lot of lot, lots to like about him. Um, uh, I think, I think he, I think he is a great schematic fit. Um, both the guys are, uh, but you know, you got an inside guy, you got your outside guy yeah. and, uh, you yeah, know, it looks like the badges are going to try to round out the class with one more of each, right? It looks like they're going to try to get two of each. And I, I can see why, and you know, I look at, uh, I look at Gauthier and, and when you put on a tape, he also, you know, I feel like he could be moved around too. Cause he can definitely rush from the edge. Um, I feel like yeah. he, his athleticism, he'd actually be a, a really good guy on like stunts and twists coming off the edge as well. He seems to move really well laterally quickly. So I think that, you know, he's a guy that may start in the middle, but could be used in a variety of ways. And honestly, Heiberger has the frame that he might bulk up to be 265. You know, I, I think he's going to try to play probably closer to 235, 240. But he, you look at his frame and it wouldn't surprise me if he just naturally got really freaking big like really really no, he, he, big. he could um well and got here he's 230 pounds right now already i mean this yeah. is a thick kid he he's he measured in at over six three on his visit i think so yep. um yeah it, it, it's a good start you got two two high upside guys two um uh, you know i i think both of them are going to be very good like you said uh rankings wise uh, i think there is some upward you know movement potential with, with both of them yep. actually yeah, and and even when you throw away the rankings, right? You 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 trust the at least it seems so far like you trust the evaluation of this coaching staff, right? Because of their track yeah. record at Cincinnati, no because question. Of, you look at the guys they already have in the class, right? Huge high upside quarterback, two really solid tight ends, a really good tackle already. You know they are re really starting to round out a class that seems like it could be very strong. I mean, I think it's already a top. 30 class in rivals. I don't know exactly off the top of my head. I think it might be like number 18 or something with yeah, only six or seven commits. So yeah, it's, it's pretty impressive, especially, you know, Wisconsin, we're not used to seeing four of those guys be four stars either. No, no, I know. Definitely and not. there, there could be more. So yeah. 19, um, yeah, 19 uh, ranked 19th right now between Auburn and Alabama. Pretty good. In between Auburn and Alabama. Around. Yeah. It's usually where you see Wisconsin's recruiting. <laughs> so um, yeah, I, I would say they're off to a good start. Now, to be fair, uh, right now, uh, Wake Forest is 12. So, you know, it, it's, it's a hey, bit of a toss hey. every time. Well, he can uh, – uh, Dave Clawson can a good evaluate job talent with the best Yeah, players. I mean, he's, no, he a, really can. he's a genius. A, he's a coach that I've always uh, greatly admired. But uh, speaking yeah, of admiring, no. uh, Clint, I admire you every single day of the year. Oh, wow. I will, Jeez. I will let you get back to the camp. Uh, thank you for, uh, for being awesome today. For being hey, here on the best be awesome. time of the week. And yeah, uh, everyone else, uh, thanks for tuning into Badger Blitz TV. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube page and be on Badger Blitz all the time. He's Clint Cosgrove at Rivals underscore Clint. I'm Matt Perkins at underscore Perko underscore. And until next time, we'll see you in the den. In the den. Let's go, baby. Let's go.